Today's lesson is going to be about diverging mirrors and lenses. Um, a diverging mirror and lens is one where instead of converging to a focal point, parallel rays are going to diverge or go away from a focal point. So if I have a convex mirror, meaning it bows out, a light that comes in parallel is going to hit the mirror and then bounce away from the focal point, which is on the other side of the mirror this time. Same thing for a concave lens now, because this is like a cave, so the light's like coming into a cave, these parallel rays are going to get here, and instead of converging toward this focal point, they'll diverge from this focal point, and they'll spread the light out. Now, you'll remember that um, concave mirrors and convex lenses were converging, so convex mirrors and concave lenses are diverging. And that's something that we have to memorize. What concave means, what convex means, and which types of mirrors are diverging, which types of lenses are diverging, and which are converging. Um, so, like we were saying, that light that comes in parallel is going to diverge or spread out from the focal point. And when we do the math, we have to remember that the focus for these is negative. Now, these can only form images which are right side up, shrunk, and virtual. So it's different. When I had the concave mirror, I could make upside down images, I could make right side up images, and I could make real or virtual. With these, they're always going to be right side up, small, and virtual. So they're going to be a little bit easier. Okay, so our example here is going to be I have a convex mirror going out towards my um, object. It has a radius curvature of 4, forming an image of a 2 centimeter tall object placed 6 centimeters in front of the object. So, when I do my ray diagram, it's kind of the same. I draw in a parallel ray, and then it's going to go away from that focus. Since it never gets behind the mirror, anything behind the mirror I'm going to do with a dotted line. So it goes in parallel, and goes directly away from this first focus, Okay, and it's a dotted line back here. I forgot to label these. You might want to mention that this is the focus and this is the center. Because remember, the center is the center of this circle. And the focus is halfway to the center. Now our next ray, we would draw straight towards the center. It can't get there because the mirror is in the way, but it's going to go straight down this way, then bounce straight back. Now, where do they meet? They're meeting back here behind the mirror. So my image looks like this. And no matter where I put this object, I'm always going to end up with a small upright image over here. Now, for the math, okay, we're going to use the same equation, 1 over DO plus 1 over DI is 1 over F. DO is 6, because it's 6 centimeters in front of the mirror, and the radius curvature is 4. That means that the focus, that means the center is at 4, so the focus is going to be at 2, and this told me that DO is 6, and SO is 2. So, as I plug into the equation, I'm going to get 1 over 6 plus 1 over DI is 1 over... Now, it's negative a half because if it is a convex mirror, that means it's diverging, which means our focus is negative. So that's something you have to be aware of when you're doing these. Now, my next step, 1 over DI... Uh, I'm going to subtract the 1, 6 from the other side, and I end up with di is negative 1.5. Let's see if that makes sense, okay? We said this distance was negative 2. di is the distance from the mirror to the image, negative 1.5. That kind of makes sense. If this is negative 2, that could be negative 1.5. Now for the size, we use the uh, magnification equation, plug in our values, and we end up with a size of negative 0.5. That makes sense as well, because the size of this object was 2, this is much shorter, okay, 0.5. What did negative mean when we do D, dis, DIs and SIs when they are negative? That means it's going to be a virtual right side up object. Our next example is going to be with a lens. So I have a concave lens here. All right, my first ray goes in parallel, and instead of going down through this focus and converging, it's going to diverge away from that focus. So use the straight edge, we're going to draw it in like this. 
we go parallel until we get to the uh, center line of the lens, and then we go away from that focus. The light is never actually here, so that's dotted. The light actually physically would get to this point and then bend out that way. Our second ray goes straight through the center, like so. Okay, And then um, we draw in our image where they meet. The image is right here. If I was to describe that image, I would say it is small and upright. And it's virtual because this line is dotted. It turns out that every ray um, from the top of this is going to go through that point. Okay, But um, this is the only one that's solid. Any other ray going through that point is going to be virtual. Using the math, let's see. Let's figure out what we have. We have a focal length of 2, but remember, a concave lens is diverging. If it's diverging, the focus has to be negative. We have an SO of 2 and a DO of 8. So when we plug those values in, we get 1 over 8 plus 1 over DI equals 1 over minus 2 for the focus. We subtract 1 8 from each side get a common denominator, so then I end up with minus 4 eighths minus 1 eighth is minus 5 eighths. And I get di is negative 1.6. Again, that makes sense. If this focal length was negative 2, okay, di is negative 1.6, so inside of negative 2. To find the size, we use the magnification equation again. Okay, uh, We plug in the values that we found, and we end up with si is negative 0.4. Again, it makes sense. This was 2 centimeters tall, okay, and this is much smaller, so only 0.4. So that's it for diverging lenses and mirrors. In your head, make sure that you know um, which types of mirrors and lenses are converging and which type of mirrors and lenses are diverging, and to be able to draw diagrams for either one.